Thanks to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. And we are back in the kitchen making yet another AI generated recipe. If you saw the last video I did on this, you know that it didn't go very well last time. We will see how it goes this time. Instead of using a recipe generated by someone else on Twitter, this time we will be using recipes generated by GPT-3, OpenAI's language model. And so I'm interested to see whether or not they come out better than what Ever that weird yogurt chicken breadcrumb thing that I made last year did. So we're gonna be making three recipes that I generated using GPT-3. We're going to make an entree, a dessert, and a cocktail because those were the three things that came up. But I definitely noticed that in generating the recipes, I think that the model is probably pulling from its training data pretty directly because sometimes the recipe generations were pretty straightforward. It just generated a full recipe and then stopped. And then sometimes it got into weird word loops or phrasing loops and seemed to kind of lose track of the idea of creating a recipe. My guess is that unlike in the other model where it was kind of randomly putting things together in the form of a recipe, this is actually GPT-3 pulling information from the data set that was trained on, which includes recipes. And that's why these at least look like they will turn out better than the last one did. So we're gonna start with a chocolate cake because it has to go into the oven. Let's get cooking. I'm actually gonna make chocolate cupcakes instead of chocolate cake, mostly because it's just easier for me because I don't have a captain. But otherwise we're gonna follow the instructions as they were given to me by the model. And so that starts with 200 grams of self-raising flour. Oh, that's interesting. So it doesn't list the, normally in a recipe you list the ingredients in the order that you use the ingredients to prevent people from effectively doing what I just did, but we have multiple bowls, so it's fine. But essentially the recipe actually says to cream together the butter and sugar first, and then deal with the flour later. 150 grams of butter. And 150 grams of castor sugar. Let's get sugar. And then for butter, I'm actually gonna weigh out the sticks of butter and then do like a half melt. While I prep all this, I'm also gonna put on some water for pasta because our main entree is pasta related. And then we are to cream them together in a bowl until light and fluffy. Good. Then we have to beat in three eggs, one at a time. And that's three. So next up we add vanilla, milk, and salt. I know this is a real recipe, but I was raised to eyeball vanilla, so I'm going to continue doing that. But just know that it's supposed to be one teaspoon. So we got one teaspoon of vanilla, 100 milliliters of milk, and a pinch of salt. Again, eyeballing. Then we add flour and cocoa powder. So here's our flour, one teaspoon of cocoa powder. And then we will mix gently with a wooden spoon or a spatula. So this is supposed to be chocolate cake. This doesn't look very chocolatey at first glance, but we shall see how it comes together once it actually bakes. I'll be putting these into a muffin tin and then putting them in the oven and we'll get on to the next recipe. As a quick author's note for people who actually bake, you may have noticed that I curdled the eggs a little bit in the first round of making the chocolate cake. So I actually made a second version of that batter where the eggs were not curdled. That's what I'm gonna be trying, just a heads up. All right, next up we have penne a la vodka, which is one of my favorite things to eat. So we will see how well GPT-3 makes a recipe for it. So we'll start by actually boiling the pasta. This says penne, I had rotini, it's fine. Next up, I'm actually gonna move you guys over here because we have to make the sauce. So in a small saucepan, we are combining vodka and tomato sauce and combining over and cooking over medium heat. It didn't specify what kind of tomato sauce. So I'm actually gonna use like jarred tomato sauce because again, this is what I have. So we'll be using some marinara and I'm supposed to use 
a quarter cup of tomato sauce and half a cup of vodka. So uh, we'll see how this one goes in that sense. A quarter cup of tomato sauce. Mm, stuff is good. We will put that in our pot with half a cup of vodka. Jesus. It's like noon. <laughs> It is entirely too early for this. All right, so it says to cook over medium heat. It does not say how long. I am guessing that it wants me to cook it until all of the alcohol is gone, but there's a lot of alcohol. So uh, <laughs> we shall see what that means. It's also a very watery pasta at this point. Ah, after that, I'm also supposed to add a quarter cup of water. Do they mean pasta water? Do we think they mean pasta water? Let's use pasta water. All right, so the pasta's done, so I'm gonna drain that. We've also reduced our sauce, I think, about as reduced as it's going to get because vodka, you know, it's a lot of alcohol, but it's not completely alcohol. Uh, so I'm going to add in our extra cup of water, quarter cup of water, as well as garlic and oregano. And then I'm supposed to let this cook for about five minutes and then season with salt and remove from the heat. And toss in our pasta and put in the bowl. And Here's what we got. Last but not least, since the cupcakes, cake, whatever you want to call them, are still cooking, we are going to make a cocktail. All right, so it doesn't say to put ice in the cocktail shaker beforehand, but I don't know why you wouldn't do that, so I'm gonna do that. Actually, you know what, let's not. Let's follow the instructions. We will start with an ounce and a half of Ciroc. It did not say what flavor, so I went with plain. Then we've got half an ounce of mango puree. We're gonna guesstimate this a little bit. Oops, it smells good. We also have half an ounce sweet and sour mix. I'm not a huge sweet and sour fan, so like we'll see how I feel about this. And then a teaspoon of simple syrup, which is a really odd measurement to use with simple syrup, but sure, why not? This does not smell good. So this is citrus bitters. And then we have here standard fitters. Last up, we get a quarter ounce of water. Okay. And a quarter ounce of fresh lime juice. I'm gonna go ahead and basically take that as one half of a lime because again, measuring that would be hard. And then strain and pour over fresh ice. As you can see, I am not a bartender. And in the interest of not making more of us, we will do this the uncouth way. That is apparently a mango Ciroc. We will start with the drink and the pasta. As a reminder, this is supposed to be our Peniola vodka, which has quite a lot of vodka in it and also a lot of water. Honestly, it's not bad. Like, it's not Peniola vodka. Peniola vodka typically has cream in it, and the alcohol is definitely not completely cooked out, but it's mostly cooked out, and you still get a little bit of the bite of the vodka. So, honestly, I wouldn't make it this way. I would add cream, but outside of that, this is, like, surprisingly good. Like, I would, I will probably eat this for lunch. <laughs> Actually, maybe I won't, because I'm eating in, like, 20 minutes and don't really want to be drunk for it. Next up, we have our mango syrup cocktail. That's good. Wait, what? No, that's actually good. I should look it up and see whether or not this is like an actual recipe from somewhere because this is a cocktail that I would like legitimately drink. Like this is, this is tasty. I would drink this. I would recommend drinking this. Okay, I may have lied. I might actually finish this. Oh my God. I added a little more lime to it. It's a good cocktail. Hmm, interesting. I'm looking up whether or not a mango Ciroc is actually a thing. And so you can get mango flavored vodka, but it's not like a drink name. So there's stuff that's like along the same lines as this, but not exactly this drink. So if anyone knows if this is like a real drink that exists somewhere, definitely let me know in the comments because I'm very curious because it's very good. Moving on. All right, so last but not least, we have our chocolate cake, which does not look particularly chocolatey. We shall see. Looks like it's cooked all the way through, which is honestly, I wasn't sure if that was gonna happen. So that's good. They just came out of the oven. I'm supposed to let them cool, but I also have a meeting. So we're gonna have them hot. So let's see how this tastes. It's not chocolate. <laughs> it's fine. It needs just a lot more chocolate in it 
It does, it, it has a cakey texture, which I'm impressed by. So like, it actually does feel like a cake. It has a good crust on the outside, but like, this isn't chocolate cake. This is like a very, very plain muffin. I'd actually say it's slightly overbaked, at least on the outside, or maybe like 30 minutes at a lower temperature would be a little bit better. Cause it's like dry on the outside and then like decent on the inside. We've got essentially one hit and then what I would call two, all right. <laughs> Uh, a lot of it comes down to, I guess, how drunk you want to be at lunch and how much you actually want your chocolate cake to taste like chocolate cake when it comes to this. But if you're looking for an approach to cooking that will give you hits every time you make a meal by sending you recipes and all of their ingredients to your door, you should definitely check out HelloFresh. HelloFresh offers so many recipes to choose from each week that will help you break out of your recipe rut with more five-star reviews than any other meal kit so you know you'll get something delicious, which I definitely can't say for artificial intelligence. You can choose from an ever-growing new rotation of weekly recipes featuring hearty soups, chilies, and in-season fall produce to take advantage of the season's fresh flavors. I actually used to use HelloFresh during my PhD when I was too busy to meal prep or cook or just knew that I wasn't going to have the mental space for it, and I've loved everything that I've made with them. HelloFresh helped me get back into the habit of cooking at home with quick and affordable meals, and I usually had enough food left over for lunch the next day. Plus, as someone who often buys groceries that I don't end up using and who has to throw them out at the end of the week, HelloFresh's pre-portioned ingredients means that there's less prep and less food waste. So if you're interested in getting recipes generated and delivered to you without having to worry about whether or not artificial intelligence actually knows what chocolate cake is, go to hellfresh.com and use the code 14JORDAN to get 14 free meals plus free shipping. Again, even if you're just checking them out for a couple weeks, I highly recommend at least trying HelloFresh. They've been a great resource during those busy parts of my life when I know that I won't have time to cook. Additionally, supporting my sponsors is one of the best ways to directly support me, so thanks in advance.